and enjoy your victories. I think uh, when you come off the field and you've really given 100% and you know your teammates have to come off the field and you've had a win, he's probably what you play footy for. He's like an eel, isn't he? The way he winds his way around his opponent. He worked hard. He did the desperate things on the ground. He never shirked the training session. He played with injuries. Uh, why wouldn't you love him? Gets it to Williams. Williams outside 50. Centering kick Silvani has a run. Takes a specky. Oh, I think he's pain barrier. Loves his pretty good. Loves his foot. Yeah. He'll go out with I think with a broken leg if he could. Silvani and Cal. Since 1958, it's been a union. Unique and unmatched in football. The merging of family and club, embodied by the two men as father and son, together but separate as champions of their own respective generations. Serge Silvani was nine years into a 239-game career when his first and only son was born. And it wasn't long before Stephen's desire emerged to follow in his father's footsteps. My dream was to play AFL footy, or VFL footy when it was then. It's really all I really wanted to do as a kid. I'd come home from school and I'd kick the ball out on the road and it didn't help me to kick well, but, <laughs> but you know, I always wanted just to have a footy in my hand and do that type of thing. So um, obviously that was sort of woke up and Serge always told me, you know, like footy's not going to be there. Like what, what happens if you, can't, you don't make it or, you know, that type of stuff. You know, it's tough and he always played a low played it very low key. He played tackers football, which is, he was about an eight year old. And uh, it was the first game, and you could just see that he could read where the ball was going. Most kids just chase the, the, the ball in a big pack and he'd just sit off it and then just come through and read it. And they wanted to say, oh gee, this kid can play. Uh, we'll put him up in the under 10s. And I said, no. Nah. He'll just play his tackers, and then he'll play his age group when he's old enough. Courtesy of Serge's playing and coaching, Stephen was immersed in football's culture earlier than most, with some of the game's greats as his first teachers. Serge was always a, a great friend and, and a mentor of mine. Uh, Serge is 10 years older, but we played together in grand finals and shared a lot of great times, so there was always the, the strength of that relationship. And I can remember Stephen as just a kid um, coming down for Sunday training, and Serge would bring him along, and you'd see him grow up through the stages there. So on the Sunday mornings, I used to sit in on the players dissecting each other's performance on the Sunday morning, which was absolutely ruthless. And if you know the culture of the club at Carlton and, and the way and the acid tongue of a McClure, Mackay, Buckley, and those guys, they used to carve each other's performance up if there was a glitch or, or a weakness or a mistake. And he's picked that up. I mean, you could imagine kid being eight, nine, ten years of age and you know you're, you're walking around again alongside you know, Alex Jezelenko and Bruce Stool and Mark McClure, Wayne Johnson and these and I barracked for Carlton so you know every time like after a game now like, you know you sit down and you, you're getting unchanged and whatever and these little kids walk in the room and uh, you know they're looking at you know the plays, the cooters and these type of things and you know, I cast mine back, my mind back, you know, 20 years ago, basically, and I was there all the time. How fortunate I was that I was able to, you know, mix it with some of those great players. Screws it back towards the goal square. Here's Stephen Silvani, picks it up, slides it through, another goal to Marcelin. There's six one, 37 assumptions, three two twenty. There's young Stephen Silvani. 
Son of a Carlton veteran Serge. He carried the lessons of the early years through to his time at Marcelin College. Playing school football against the likes of Gary Lyon, Gavin Brown and Bill Brownlee. Off the ground. Silvani with a good hand pass. Here's another goal perhaps. Setting it up. Gavin Brown, his third and Marcelin moves further ahead. 17-5. There was actually a time where I really grew. I must it was you know, probably at the age of 13 and 14 and I really became uncoordinated and um, just remember like I'd be running along and I'd be kicking the inside of my ankle like pigeon toed and and it was just really frustrating to not be able to do things when your mind's telling you to do stuff and uh, I'd just gone through a massive growth spurt and I'd really dropped off like I was terrible <laughs> times I'd missed the ball and whatever so you know, that was a worry. I'd like to congratulate Assumption on the, you know, they fought it out to the end and their coach... Stephen almost had to grow into his body to get used to it. Whatever happened, it was only a matter of time before the Blues beckoned. And for the comparisons with his father to begin. Silvani wins a keenly contested mark to stem a dangerous thrust and puts the Blues into an attacking when position. When I arrived at Carlton, I just considered myself as any other young guy st you know, starting out and I did everything they did and uh, I think I was fortunate that... It only sort of took me six reserves games before I made senior footy. So, and then I played the remaining 13, 14 games, whatever it was that season. So, I probably established myself fairly quickly, which made it a lot easier. So, that pressure of having to, you know, carry the name or being Serge's son wasn't there. Oh, it's a oh, shocking kick. kick. Oh, that is bad play by Zantuck. An easy mark taken by Steve Silvani, the ex marsland College schoolboy. I think being the son of, uh, of a Carlton and AFL legend, it'd be enormous pressure in initially, but it's a, you know, a testament to Serge and, and to, to Soss himself, um, just the way that, that you know he's just evolved and it's got to a stage now where he's just an outright champion of his own ilk. Um, and both of them are, and, uh, and that's how they're looked upon. To have a father that's played senior footy and um, played quite a bit of footy and you know, be reasonably successful at it, um, for him to be able to give me the guidance along the way, that, uh, and obviously you know, fathers probably know their sons better than anyone, and he knows when I'm <laughs> probably not going 100% or I'm not doing things right or I should do something a bit different, to have that guidance. And it's not as if he, a lot, it's not as if he basically um, told me what to do. He, there were suggestions that, uh, you know, maybe I, I should be doing something a bit differently or whatever. And it's just uh, to have that influence uh, as a youngster, particularly, I think was, um, it was a real benefit for me to be able to sort of push on and go and go so, the distance of playing so many games in, 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 uh, at Carlton. As fate would have it, the number one worn by his father was available to be handed down. A new chapter in the Silvani story had commenced. Yeah, I can remember receiving my first jumper. Oh, they had a dinner, so I think the Tuesday before the uh, first game. So, um, and I got received. I was given the uh, number one jumper, which was, you know, huge, real, because. All the kids I was starting out with were getting number 52, 55 and 60. <laughs> and he always given number one, so, <laughs> you know, it was uh, probably a bit of a joke at the table at the time, you know. But, uh, yeah, listen, I was fortunate to be given a number. By 1985, and despite his young age, Stephen's chances of being picked for the seniors were becoming stronger. But Serge was on the selection committee under David Parkin at the time. So I was a bit apprehensive, apprehensive of him starting as a 17-year-old. You know, I just wasn't too keen. I just wanted to sort of just been out of come out of school. I just wanted to be mature a bit, physically even, and you know, be an 18 or 19-year-old before he started senior football. Bradley back into the breeze. Somebody. Stephen finally convinced his father that he should go over the line, and uh, and, he, and he looked from the first moment they natural for for the game and uh, has gone on to become I think one of the 
the great um, people. Um, if you want role models for sport, and Australian football needs them like any other sport. I kept away from him as much as I could. You'd never see me in the rooms in a game having a chat to him. I'd always do it through a third person if I had something to say to him. So it'd be a Stephen Guy for a Cole Kinnear. Later on, the Rod Ashman, if I had something to say to him, I'd like, hey, why don't you try this, why don't you try that? It'd always be through a third person. I'd never be there in front of people laying the law down or telling him to do things. Serge wasn't alone in his initial apprehension. I always thought, you know, I was worrying him getting hurt or worrying him playing well. And so I was more worried on that side of things, but. You know, you just sort of, you were proud in the, at the same time that he was sort of trying to achieve something. Collins gives it on to Bakanaru, hooks it over the shoulder. Good play by Silvani, a lovely mark. She's seen most of my games and uh, a hell of a lot of Serge's games. She loves her footy. She thinks she's an expert and uh, we'll let her think that. <laughs> I think he's down. Sometimes your heart is in your mouth. So, so, oh, what does he do that for? You know, you sort of worry about it, but that, that's his guy. And you can't sometimes say to him, what did you have to do that for? Especially with, now that he's getting a bit older. So he's not young anymore. But, you know, that's the way he plays. The female family influence was hard for both Serge and his son to escape. Three sisters and also my mother, so that's four girls that both Serge and I had to put up with over the years and probably it even got worse when we ended up getting dogged and it was female as well. The year after his debut, a former club champion returned to coach. Steve was just a skinny teenager. I'd seen him develop and grow as a kid because obviously Serge is a great friend and uh, I'd seen young Stephen come through, but I didn't know too much about him as a footballer. Silvani has a chance to get, yes, he got into the uh, back of court. And what Walls did know was his conviction that fledgling players should first ply their trade in the back line. It dropped in short. Silvani, great play by Stephen Silvani. Back himself gathers the football and gives the hand pass off to Robinson. I've always had a belief that young fellows, and I guess I go back to the Fitzroy days when I had a young Gary Pert and a young Paul Ruse and Richard Osborn, I started all of them in the back line. Just think it's a little bit easier when the play coming towards you. And you don't get knocked around as much as a defender because you're the one who's doing the spoiling and the punching. They're not coming in on top of you. So I looked at Stephen and I just thought he'd, he, an ideal apprenticeship would be to play back pocket, full back, and, and that's what we did. Silvani well up from full back. Great play, Stephen Silvani. Kappa is 100 metres away. When I was young, I never thought I'd be a backman. Never in my wildest dreams, but... Uh, when you go to a footy club, you just, or particularly at senior level, um, you're just so happy to get a game. So whether they put you in the back pocket, full back, wherever, on the bench, you know, it doesn't worry you. But uh, I never, I mean, going down to, to Carl, I never thought I'd play in the back line. I always saw myself as a forward. But, um, you know, when I got the opportunity to play senior footy, I was in the back half, I was wrapped. For Armstrong, drive the ball well over the centre line. He does. Hunter down there on the forward line. He must be a bit worried about that injury. Going to his son, but he shows a lot of courage there and a lot of class as he drives the ball. A fight with glandular fever limited match time in the early part of 1986. But the young Silvani fought back. He played in September and Carlton made it through to the grand final. Selection to play Hawthorne, though, wasn't as straightforward as it seemed. Silvani, well done. We ended up playing the next sort of 13 games straight, including two finals. And, um, you know, got to uh, to the grand final and ended up getting dropped to the grand final, which was uh, you know, a pretty tough time for a you know, 19-year-old kid that uh, you know, really just loved playing footy back there, and footy was basically his life. He'd been part of the team for most of the year and to be dropped for the grand final, he was only a teenager, it, had, it broke his heart and uh, it gave me no joy doing that but 
you obviously pick the team that you think is the right one. And Stephen was the one who missed out. I believe it should have been Rob and the match committee or all the chairman and selectors. But it was him looking back on it now, look, not, not at the time, but looking back, you know, it's a pretty tough decision for any coach to do. And uh, he just basically said, listen, um, you know, you're, you're out of the side, you've had injuries. I had a cook shoulder as well, but um, you know, you've been crook and, uh, you know, you're out of the side, you know. And, you know, listen, I can't really recall what I'd said, but, you know, I walked out and um, went out into, you know, the, basically the changing room and just people knew, because you knew that every time someone got called into the coaching room, well, he was out of the side, so they, they knew I was out of the side. So, and I'm standing there and it just felt as though the room had collapsed on me because you could see people were looking, but they weren't looking. And I just had to get out of there. So I, I basically jumped in the car and, sort of took the long way home and, you know, that was the night, basically. <laughs> he kept out of it, Mum was <laughs> on his side. <laughs> oh, Mum was going with him all the way, but I had to do the balance thing, like knowing, being involved in match committee and knowing that he was on the fringes and the way they were thinking, you sort of had to prepare him, which he wasn't listening. Yeah. So, yeah, you might make it. It's just expect that, you know, if you make it, it's a bonus. Yet keep him up to the expectations that he was playing in the final. So the, the final decision on him being in the team wasn't made until the, the Thursday night before the grand final. Kicks it off the ground, it's going close, it'll be a simple oh. With Stephen on the sidelines, the Blues went into battle. won by 42 points in a sorry farewell for Bruce Dool, the only man whose career spanned both Serge and Stevens' era. For the younger Silvani, it was a lesson on the game's sometimes brutal reality. It knocked him around, I've got no doubt about that. And to his credit, he went back and played in the reserves grand final and played well. And that was the same day as the senior grand final. But um, maybe it, uh, maybe in the long run it was good for him because I'm sure that he never took for granted his position in the team and how important it was to have a chance to play in finals, let alone a grand final. You know, that they made a decision. Um, so I, I don't blame the coach or, you know, like looking back, at the time I was probably blaming the coach, but as the years go on, you, you learn and know how things operate. And, um, you know, you get a lot wiser and know reasons why things are done. 